tem, tem pessoas que não falam português, imagino, né? Sim, não, ok. Eu, eu okay let, 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 vou falar em inglês. Hello, sure. everybody. Is everybody um, hearing our speaker? I guess. Yes. Um, you have a question from one of our students. Uh, she wants to know where is the, uh, which uh, channel you have your um, minimal surfaces uh, course. Ah, okay. Um, sorry. I just a minute. Okay, Zach. Here's the link. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, you're up. I think we're ready to start, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, it is a pleasure to introduce Marco Petrucci Cavalcanti from the Federal University of Alagoas. And uh, he is uh, one of the member of this uh, young generation of brilliant leaders in Brazil. Thank you. Following the great tradition of uh, Manfredo do Carmo and uh, others. And um, the title of his talk today will be Gap Theorems for Free Boundary Submanifolds. So it's a pleasure. Let's uh, welcome the speaker for this uh, uh, webinar, Geometry webinar. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Paulo. And he can the, all the organizers for the opportunity. I'm happy to to have this opportunity to give this talk here. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, you probably know I will speak in broken English. <laughs> so today um, I will talk about two works, two recent works. I did joint with my friends Ezequiel Barbosa and Edno Pereira. The first one about the gap results for free boundary. CMC surface in the Euclidean tree ball, and uh, also um, other wor work with my friends Abraão Mendes and Feliciano Vittorio, vanishing theorems for cohomology groups of free boundary submanifolds. Um, these are two different, very different works, but somehow it's, they are related. So to start, uh, I'd like to recall some. Uh, Gap results for closed submanifolds in the sphere. I start with this nice theorem of Gene Simons, where sigma is a compact without boundary, okay, submanifold immersed, minimally immersed in the unit sphere or in any codimension. K is the codimension. Then this inequality holds on sigma involving the norm of the second fundamental form of sigma. And as a direct consequence of this inequality, we get that if uh, the norm square of A is less than or equal n over 2 minus 1 over k, then this, the, this function, the, inter, the integrant here is known is next non positive, so have uh, only two cases, either this norm equals to zero or this norm equals to n over two minus one over k, I mean, the other constant, okay? Well, just after Lane Lawson and uh, Kobayashi classified all submanifolds satisfying the second inequality, okay? The very nice minimal surface in S5 and the Clifford Tori, this one, are the only compact minimal submanifolds, manifolds, dimension N in the sphere, satisfying the equality, the second equality. And in particular, in co-dimension one, only Clifford Tori appears, right? Torus appears, and I, Moreover, in, I'd like to st state the theorem in dimension three, I mean, for surface, uh, closed minimal surface in F3, satisfying th that the square of the norm of the second fundamental form less than or equal to, then either the surface is a totally Jodeski sphere or the cliff of torus, up uh, isometry of S3. 
Okay, so it's a consequence of these results. Um, let me say that um, in the same year, 1968, SS Turn proposed the following problem. Consider closed minimal submanifolds in this unit sphere with second fundamental form of constant length. The first question is, is the set of values for the norm of a discrete? What's the infimum of these values after that, uh, that number, n over 2 minus 1 over k, OK? And uh, the affirmative hand of the first question is usually called sharing conjecture. And uh, there are many works in this direction, in this, this term, even recently. <clears throat> um, I'd like to also mention that this problem appears in 1982 Yao's list of open problems. It's the problem uh, 105. And uh, here, the, the problem is stated in terms of the scalar curvature because, as we, we know, by Gauss equation, the scalar curvature R and the norm of the second fundamental form are related by this equation. Okay? So it means that uh, uh, we mind the gap. Okay? <laughs> That's my motivation. So I'd like now to to mention two, two generalizations of these results. The first I call a topological gap. It's a theorem of Lawson and Simons. Um, here we have a closed submanifold in the sphere, but without any condition on the mean curvature, right? Just a closed submanifold. Uh, so if the norm of A square is less than this number, the minimum of these two numbers, for some p, okay, uh, less than equal n minus one, then uh, p and positive integer, then any finitely generated abelian group G for any for any abelian generated abelian, finitely generated generated abelian group G, the homology group of sigma are trivial, okay? In particular, uh, we can easily see that this, the minimum here in P occurs when P equals to one, and so all the groups vanishes in this case, and we conclude that sigma is a homotopy sphere. So it's a nice theorem of loss and Simons. And uh, I also like to mention sorry. the- Sorry, yeah? one, one question. In yes. this statement, you mean that for any p or e no, or no, for each. Sorry, each p. Ah, okay. You think you, you fix a p? Ah, okay, yeah. Between one and uh, n minus one, and then conclude that this group H p is trivial, right? Okay. Fix okay. P. Uh, but if you you know, it's an increasing sequence in p here. This is an increasing sequence in p. So the lowest value is when p equals to one. If uh, you choose p equals to one, so all the groups vanishes are trivial, right? Right. Thank you. Okay. Is it clear? Uh, you're coming. So let's go. And now we also have a version of Shen, Dukan, Kobayashi, and Lawson theorem for hypersurface in the sphere with constant mean curvature h, okay? In this case, the condition is on the traceless second fundamental form, I call phi, okay? And there's a constant c, which is the square of the positive root of this polynomial. So c depends on the dimension and the and h, the, the, the value of the mean curvature. So if this norm, square is less than or equal to this constant, then either uh, the norm is identically zero and the sigma is a total umbilical hypersurface in the, yeah, the sphere, or the equality occurs, and in this case, sigma is uh, h, uh, hr torus, 
which kinds of uh, cliff authors of constant mean curvature, right? They are well loved. And uh, so the, the next I would like to talk about some related results to these theorems in the case of free boundary submanifolds. Let me uh, start with some definitions. Uh, first, I will consider just minimal submanifolds, more easy to think. And uh, so, let sigma now a submanifold, submanifold, compact submanifold with boundary in the unit ball B, okay, in co-dimension, such that the, it intersects the boundary only on the boundary of sigma. We say that sigma is a free boundary minimal submanifold if sigma is minimal in the interior and intersects the boundary in a right angle. Okay. So uh, such submanifolds are critical points for the area functional of variations of sigma whose boundary boundaries are free to move into the boundary of the ball. Okay. So it the reason we call free boundary submanifolds. Um, free boundary minimal and constant mean curvature surface in the unit ball B3 actually were personally studied by in the pioneer work of uh, Nietzsche in 1985. Okay. And uh, there are two basic examples in the minimal case. The First one, of course, is a, a flat ball, okay, uh, a kind of um, equator, I mean. And also the famous example is, is the critical catenoid, okay. You know, the catenoids in Euclidean space uh, come in a family. You can parameterize by the next size, and there is a special size where this catenoid is orthogonal to the sphere. So. It's called the critical catenoid. Uh, there are recently many people constructed many kind of examples. I have here a, a list of many authors working um, the, where I can find my main examples. But uh, I'd like to show you a very nice picture of a free boundary minimal surface with genus two, two, and one boundary component that were constructed by Carlotto, Franz, and Schultz very recently. Is it here? Okay. Can you see? So uh, this is, um, oh, I mean, a free boundary and uh, a surface with boundary, but with genus two. Okay. So, as I said, there are many nice examples in this theory, especially in the, the minimal case. Okay, uh, but it's very interesting to note that many aspects of closed minimal submanifolds in the unit sphere have an analogous one for free boundary minimal submanifolds in the unit ball. So, despite this, I'd like to, to Recall this nice theorem of Ambrosio and Nunes, recent theorem. Uh, and um, here we consider a compact free boundary minimal surface. And we assume that this inequality holds on sigma. So it's the, the norm of the second fundamental form square times this, this support function square. So if it's less than or equal to, then either this quantity is definitely zero and sigma is a flat equatorial disk, or the equality holds uh, at some point of sigma. And in this case, they prove that sigma is a, a critical catenoid at the uh, isometry. Okay, so uh, we can see this, we regard this theorem as a free boundary version of the theorem of uh, Lawson, Shen, Ducarno, and Kobayashi, okay? So in this sense, uh, we have some, many other examples where some theorems that hold for closed surface or submanifolds in general in the unit sphere 
have a counterpart for free boundary in the free boundary case. And this is uh, the first example. And uh, now uh, I'd like to consider free boundary constant mean curvature surface. Okay, so in B3. So here we have a surface dimension, dimension two in B3. And uh, these uh, surface are also characterized as the critical point for the area functional, but for variation that preserves the, the volume and also uh, keeps the boundary freely on the, the boundary of this sphere, the boundary of the ball. Okay. And the, the base examples, again, are spherical caps and pieces of Delaney surface. In this second picture here, what you can see is a small piece of uh, unduloid, okay, a uh, Delaney surface. And here you have a piece of a, a spherical cap. Okay, so with my first result I'd like to, to show you is a gap for free boundary constant mean curvature surface analogous to the result of Ambrosio in Nunes. It's in collaboration with Ezequiel Barbosa and Edno Pereira. So now we have a, we have a compact free boundary symmetry surface in the unit ball. And uh, we assume that this uh, inequality holds. So here again, we have the norm of the second fundamental form square the support function. And here we have a terms which involves the mean curvature and again, the support function. Okay, so I, we prove also that in this case, either this quantity equals to zero and sigma is, is a spherical cap or the equality occurs at some point and sigma is part of a Delaney surface. Uh, just like to, mentioned that um, you should note that in the minimal case, uh, the phi uh, coincides with the, the second fundamental form A, okay? And then we get the same uh, expression as in the work of Ambrosio and Nunes. So it's the, I mean, the right generalization in that sense. And um, now I'd like to sketch the proof of this theorem. So, professor, professor, yeah, me. yeah. Uh, Mircea has a question. Mircea Petrach, in the. Mm. There's a, sorry. I have a question about the person. One of the, one of the uh, uh, people in the audience would like to ask you a question about the Ambrosio Nunes minimum surface gap result. Um, the question is ah, whether there are other conditions beyond the left hand ah. side zero and two. I don't know. Good question. Uh, Maybe I will ask uh, the person yeah. to formulate uh, the question uh, written formula uh, reformulation to send it to you. Okay. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Michel. Thank you. Let's go. Okay. So, actually, we, our, the proof of our theorem follows the same steps as in Ambrosio Nunes paper. And the idea is to analyze the convexity of this distance function restrict to the surface. Um, we first note that the eigenvalues of the ratio, I call this function of phi, okay? So the ratio of phi in sigma, the eigenvalues are given by this expression here. So it depends, it's related with, it is given by the principal curvatures of the sigma with respect to the unit normal vector n. And um, so with this expression, 
uh, we can prove that uh, under the same conditions uh, of the theorem, the ration, the ration of phi is no negative, okay? And uh, in fact, we proved that the upper, upper this constant, the product of the eigenvalues, in fact, equals to this expression and the, the to be non-negative non is exactly our uh, hypothesis, all right? And uh, we also prove that the sum of the eigenvalues is non-negative, so we get this lemma. But I'd like to mention here that um, if we have uh, a strict inequality in our theorem, I mean, if uh, this is positive, then in fact, uh, we prove that the, the rationale is also strictly positive. This is, as, this is an important observation in the proof. Okay. And uh, you can see that uh, the free boundary condition implies that the Jodesk curvature of the boundary of uh, sigma equals one. In particular, it, it's a strict convex curve in sigma. Okay, and now uh, we have this key lemma of Ambrose and Nunes. They consider the set C, called C, the, the points of sigma where the function phi attains its minimum in sigma, okay? So they can prove that, can see that um, under the conditions of the theorem, this set is a totally convex set. It means that any geodesic arc join two points in C is entirely contained in C. Moreover, uh, either C is a single point or it's a circle. Uh, now, if you have a strict inequality, as I said, then the ration is strictly positive and sigma is a single point. And uh, well, in this case, we can see that every loop in sigma with a base point at C can be deformed to, firstly, we can deform in the homotopy class to a geodesic arc, but as C is a, um, totally convex set, okay? This arc is inside C, but since C is a single point, we get this, this, this path, this homotopy path is just a point, so it's trivial. And so sigma is a topological disk. In this case, there is a term of Nietzsche that implies, that guarantees that sigma is a spherical cap. This term says that, um, uh, CMC free, a free boundary CMC disk in the unit ball is a spherical cap. It is, I mean, in some sense, the analogous of the Hopf theorem for surfaces in Euclidean space or in space forms. Uh, well, otherwise, uh, I mean, if uh, you don't have a strict inequality, I mean, if the equality holds at some point, then sigma is not homeomorphic to a disk. And uh, using the previous lemma, we can prove that C is a plain circle, say orthogonal to the uh, E3 direction. And also this circle is a geodesic of uh, sigma. And then we consider the, this function v, which is the inner product of the normal, the unit normal, with uh, the killing vector field induced by the rotations of a three around the line in direction uh, e three. Okay, so um, we can prove that uh, the points of uh, C, a critical points of V, and also they are containing the nodal set of V. 
but I forgot to, to, to type here that um, V, this function, uh, since, since V is a, a capital V, is a killing vector field, this function uh, V is also a solution to the Jacob equation. I forgot to, to put it here. It means that the Laplacian of V plus the norm of the second fundamental form squared times V is, the, is zero. So V is a solution to this uh, PDE, okay, to this equation. And uh, so what we have? We have a solution to this elliptic PDE and um, with the set of uh, the nodal the nodal set of the solution with uh, contain a curve uh, a curve of critical points okay so in this case the Sheng's nodal lemma implies that this function v is identically zero okay here i forgot to say that v is a solution to a pd a little pd and uh, so there are many informations here, but it's okay. Uh, it means that uh, since V is density zero, it implies that sigma is in fact a surface of revolution and uh, we are done, okay? The, those surfaces are the Delaney surface. So it's the sketch of the proof, of course. I try to be brief. And uh, I have here, now I have some remarks about this theorem. Uh, first, we check in, in the paper that uh, there are some portions of nodoids and undoloids that are free bounded in the, in the ball and satisfy the, the, our, the inequality of our theorem, okay? Uh, but we also check there are portions of the Delaney surface that are still free bounded and satisfies the opposite inequality at some points. And so it's an interesting phenomenon we should do, um, understand. Uh, the second remark, uh, Renato Betiol, Paulo Piccioni, and Bianca Santoro proved that the unit ball B3 is foliated by a smooth one parameter family of CMC free boundary analyte including no, undoloids, nodoids, and the critical catenoid. And it's an interesting question to check if such family satisfies the pinching condition of the theorem. We also don't know. Okay. And finally, uh, I'd like to say that uh, Ambrosio Nunes theorem was generalized to high codimensions by Barbosa and Vianna, I mean, for surface to mention two in the Euclidean ball of high dimension. And for space forms, three dimension space forms actually by Li and Xiong. And our theorem I present here was recently generalized for conformal Euclidean balls by Andrade, Barbosa, and Pereira. Uh, Maria Andrade is present in this presentation. Right? Okay, and uh, well, now I'd like uh, to talk about the, our, the second result. I mean, the topological gap theorems for free boundary submanifolds in high dimensions. So I state the, the main theorem here. Again, it's a theorem with my collaborators, Mendes and Vittorio. Uh, I believe they are present here too. So what, what say our theorem? Well, let M be a compact oriented submanifold immersed in the Euclidean ball. The dimension of the submanifold is greater than or equal three, and which is free boundary and has flat normal bundle. So, it's a technical condition I will explain in the, the proof. So we proved that if the norm of the traceless second fundamental form square is less than this number, n, n, n p, n minus p, for some positive integer p less than equal 
the integer part of n over 2. Then the cohomology group of m with uh, real coefficients are trivial. Okay, so, so in some sense, it's a kind of uh, a generalization of the theorem of, I mentioned, the theorem of uh, Lawson and Simons. And in particular, if uh, this, we get p equals to 1, the, the, the lowest uh, number here, then all cohomology group vanish, and m has only one boundary component. I try to explain um, this theorem. Uh, before to sketch the proof, I'd like to say that uh, we can improve this gap here if we assume that the submanifold is minimal. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> I mean this is the second theorem. Assume the, the submanifold is minimal, and then then we have a, a gap, a bigger gap here. But again, we just uh, obtain this, I mean, topological gap. I mean, it's just uh, the the group is trivial, but uh, we have no a more rigid um, theorem in this case. Uh, okay. And uh, now I'd like to sketch the, the proof of these theorems. And the idea is to use uh, harmonic p-forms. In fact, uh, uh, we know that the cohomology group of m of n minus p is isomorphic to the space of harmonic p-forms, which are, oops, uh, this one, which are, which are normal to the boundary, and also is mock to this space H n uh, n minus p, where this 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 one with n is the space of harmonic performs that are tangential to the boundary. Uh, okay, this is a kind of uh, it's the Hodge de Hunt theorem in this case with manifold with boundary. And uh, I'd like to remark that the dimension of this space H T1 is bounded from below by R minus 1, where R is the number of boundary components of M. So in our theorem, if you get this, this space is trivial, we conclude that the submanifold has only one boundary component because this observation. It is a lemma in our work of Ambrosio, Carlotto, and Sharp. Okay. And uh, the proof, I, I hear, uh, I'd like to sketch the proof. Um, well, the first, uh, since you have a free boundary submanifold in the Euclidean ball, we conclude that the boundary uh, of this submanifold is umbilical in M. In this case, there is a white symbol formula uh, stated here. Okay, so this uh, identity holds alpha is a number which is p or uh, n minus p, depending whether omega lies in this space h and p or in this space h t p. Okay, and uh, r is the state act on p forms. It's the classical Weizenbach formula. Uh, other, uh, another result we need is the called it's called the refined Cato's inequality, which says that in the case of um, uh, monkey p forms, the the, the norm of uh, nabla omega square is greater than equal this constant times the norm of the gradient of the normal formula. It's also square. It's also a well-known inequality that holds for p forms, among forms. Okay. So the the idea, of course, is to plug this inequality in the white symbolic formula. 
But we uh, like also to mention there is a term of lean and uh, it, oh, look, it's a, a result of uh, local nature. If you have an immersed uh, submanifold in the Euclidean space with flat normal bundle, and here is the the only point where we need this condition, then the Weizenbach curvature term can be uh, estimated in terms of the norm of the second, the traceless second of fundamental form and the mean curvature. Okay, this is a kind of application of uh, the Gauss equation. Very okay. So um, now, given a harmonic p form omega in one of these spaces, we denote by u the norm of omega. Okay, and uh, we should note that um, applying these three lemmas, we get an equality just on the norm of omega. Uh, and also, we denote by phi here, uh, it's not the, the, the new phi here, it's the sub, the sub of, uh, on M of the norm of the second fundamental form of n okay so using these notations and applying this this lemmas we get this inequality here okay you believe in me so it's more or less a direct application and at some point we apply some um, cauchy schwartz inequality with epsilon and uh, here a and b are constants depending on the n p and the parameter epsilon we get in the cauchy schwarz inequality. So uh, uh, it's important to say they, 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 who are A and B, uh, they are here, okay? These, here are the expressions to A and B. But the point is, uh, look, we have uh, <clears throat> some uh, freedom to choose the epsilon. So it's a, a good uh, thing to, to use in the proof. But now uh, I'd like to present our last ingredient. Uh, it is the following hard type inequality for sub-manifolds, which was, Marcus, yes? Can I just, yeah, sorry, sure. can I just, just quickly interrupt you? Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you please just give an idea, before we proceed, just give an idea of how flatness intervenes in a Lin's lemma. All right, good. Um, uh, they, let me Otherwise, we can, maybe we can discuss this in the, in the question. Okay, but you know, uh, it's clear in the paper, I, I read the, the proof, you know, they, 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 he shows uh, a special local frame which uh, they, uh, I don't remember very well, but uh, it's very clear in the proof the of Lin's lemma, okay? So you need flatness in some sense to, to be able to choose a good frame to compute. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's, that's, that's okay. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so, um, Batista, Mirandola, and Vittorio, Proved a very general hard inequality for submanifolds in, in also a very general ambient manifolds. When we apply those uh, that, that inequality, in I mean for submanifolds in the ball with free boundary, then the inequality read as stated here. Okay, so it's an equality for no negative functions on M involving the gradient of this function and the mean curvature and the boundary too. Okay, so, so this is the last ingredient. We applied this inequality in our previous inequality. Okay, the, the previous inequality is actually essentially um, came from the Weizenbach uh, formula. Then plug in. Batista million dollar Vittor inequality here. We obtain this last inequality. 
Okay, so so we are done because um, when we can check that our condition on the norm of the second fundamental form imply implies that these coefficients here are all strictly positive. Okay, so that's the idea. So in this case, all these integrals are zero, and then first we conclude that uh, <coughs> u, the norm of omega, recall, is uh, zero on the boundary, so omega vanishes on the boundary. And also here we conclude that this form is parallel. And since it's harmonic, we conclude that it's it is exactly zero, and uh, we are done. Okay, it's more or less the sketch of the proof of our theorem. And uh, I mean, if you assume uh, the immersion is minimal, then we can see uh, we can prove this constant. So that's the idea. And uh, finally, I mean, it's more or less a very fast uh, talk. I'd like to mention that we also have uh, two dimension um, theorem for two dimension surface. Uh, look, in the previous, the previous theorems only holds in dimension greater than equal three by many reasons, but especially because uh, we use the, the hard inequality. Okay, that those inequality only holds for uh, manifolds in dimension greater than equal to three. In dimension, in two dimension, uh, we have this theorem here, again, a, a topological gap. If the sigma is a free boundary compact orientable surface in a, in a ball, and the norm of the traceless second fundamental form squared is less than or equal to two, then we can prove that sigma is a topological disk. And uh, again, if um, now we have a rigidity, because uh, if uh, we assume that M is minimal and uh, the norm of the second fundamental form is less than or equal four, then sigma is the flat equatorial disk. Um, and the proof is completely different. <clears throat> I leave the proof, uh, well, I don't know if I, I have, uh, I don't know how much time I will spend here, so don't mind. You have another 15 minutes if you want. Okay, so I, I'd like to explain the proof, uh, at least of the first part, it's very nice. It's, but look, don't, <laughs> don't read the next, the next slide, okay? <laughs> the proof is after, after that. Okay, I would like to sketch the proof of um, the two-dimensional case. So, uh, first, as I said, uh, as you know, the, <coughs> the geodesic curvature of the boundary equals one, okay? Because it's a free boundary in the ball. And then when we apply the gauss bonnet uh, theorem, we have this identity here because of, so uh, we apply the gauss bonnet theorem for the surface, okay? The, the integral of the geodesic curvature is the, the length of the boundary. But uh, we have a Minkowski identity we say that this, the, the length of the boundary is exactly two times this integral here. Okay, this is Minkowski identity. And also we know that the Gauss equation can read as, as um, this, as given this, by, uh, it's given by this identity here. It's the Gauss equation. Okay, so we plug in the gauss bonnet formula and then we get uh, here this identity and completing this square, we, we write the gauss bonnet as the, this identity here, okay? And uh, here we can see that uh, as we are inside of the unit ball, uh, 
1 minus the norm of x squared is uh, non-negative. This is also uh, non-negative or positive. And then if uh, we assume that the norm square of phi is less than equal to 2, okay, so we have this number here is uh, no negative too. So it, it, it means that uh, G equals to zero and R uh, equals one, okay? Okay. Uh, if you plug the, the same identity here, but we assume the, the minimal case, it simplifies a little, okay? I mean, this cancel here and we get this identity here, okay, in the minimal case. So if the norm of A is less than equal four, then again, this number is greater than equal zero. And so we have two possible cases. This equals to one. So in this case, we, uh, G should be zero and, and R equals to one. And sigma is a topological disk. And there is a theorem of uh, Fraser and Shen that a uh, minimal free boundary disk in the unit pole in any in higher condimension is the flat disk. Okay. And the other case, if this quantity here is zero, so in this case the the norm square of a equals to four. And so the the Gaussian curvature is, is constant minus two. Well, but uh, there's a very nice theorem of uh, Shintung Yao that says that uh, there is no even local minimal immersion of the hyperbolic space in any, in the Euclidean space, in any dimension. Okay, so it's not possible. The, it, it, this condition contradicts the, the Yao theorems. So we conclude that sigma is in fact a, a flat disk. So this is the, the proof in two dimension. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think our friend Mircea um, would like to uh, ask you a question. Okay. Hi, Mircea. Hi, how are you? Hi, thank you for the talk. Thank you. But I think I, it already appeared during the talk. I'm just, uh, in case it was not formulated very precisely. It was about the Ambrosio Nunez uh, kind of result. So the, okay. they, were show, they were showing basically that uh, a, so under the condition that you are have this quantity a squared plus scalar product uh, with n squared that yeah. point wise point wise smaller or equal than two yeah. then you are flat except if it reaches two and then you have a uh, another geometry like a, a catenoid right and so i was wondering if this is uh, um, so if i go above two if yeah. if i have an inequality smaller than two plus epsilon for example who, Good. Uh, I don't know. I believe that uh, I don't know. It's a very interesting question because uh, uh, let me show again my, my slides. There is a, a tip. Uh, uh, in the, okay, let me show you here. In the can you see my, my screen? Yeah. Okay, so remember, he is the, is the problem, okay, in the Shine conjecture, the Shine problem in the Yao list. And here, Yao said, uh, there have been works of Simons, Shine Campo Beach, Lawson Yao. More recently, Tang and Peng made a breakthrough on this problem. This paper of uh, Tern and Peng, they proved that um, the closed case, actually, the, in the closed case, 
if you, are, you assume that the norm of the second fundamental form is greater than or equal n, right? Uh, I mean, you are in a hypersurface. You have a, you are in a, you have a minimal hypersurface in the sphere. They prove that uh, there is another gap. I mean, if the the norm of the second fundamental form is greater than n, then in fact it's greater than n plus a constant, one over twelve n, I guess. Yes, I have it here the, the. Okay, there's a gap, and also there's a, I mean, a, a kind of a strong version of the Sharon conjecture that claims that the equality, the, the other values of the second fundamental forms only occurs on isoparametric hypersurface. At least in, in coordination one, there are some progresses in the closed case, but I don't know, you know, if, if there is the, this, the counterpart results for free boundary. It's a good question, actually. Ah, thank you. Okay. The closed case, there are some papers, some results. Thanks. You're um, Marcos, you probably already answered, but uh, some people showed interest in uh, the assumption of uh, flatness for the normal bundle uh, in Lin's uh, lemma. Would okay. you like to comment a little bit about this? Or maybe. Yeah, I don't, but, uh, I don't remember very well, but uh, where is. As I said, I guess because they, they use this hypothesis in the proof to, to get a special frame. You know, you know it's, a, as I said, it's a, a local result, no? local. So to, to get those uh, inequality issues, uh, a special frame, because it's uh, assumed that it, there is a, the sublimit food has flat normal bundle. I don't remember very well. Is this assumption satisfied in a um, large number of cases? I do not have enough. Uh, like, how about the... Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I, of course, I don't, yeah. Of course, it holds in coordination one, but in higher coordination, I don't know. Okay. Uh, also, Enrique would like to uh, make an announcement. Maybe this is a good time for doing so. Okay, thanks. So first of all, there are two interesting questions queued up. Uh, and I would like to make uh, one announcement as part of, which is a sub-announcement of a larger announcement. So uh, you're gonna see that our next talk, uh, next week is gonna be given by our friend Umberto Grinevich about holomorphic curves. But that fits in the broader program of this event, which I'm posting to the chat just now which is going to be a week-long uh, uh, webinar. Uh, it, it was planned to be a, a, a workshop, but now it's going to be online. So, so Umberto, uh, as part of the uh, South American uh, webinar, will be giving at once a talk in our, in our week-long event about special geometries and gauge theory, right? Hosted by our French collaborator, uh, Eric Lubo, and also co-organized by Andres Moreno and also Carl Tipler. So um, please have a look at the program. I've, I've, I've given you the link here. There'll be interesting talks, three talks uh, every day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the last, la the last talk of all will be uh, Umberto's talk, so our seminar will overlap. And now the technology opens the possibility of having the same talk in two conferences at once, right? So I believe we're pioneers in this, uh, in this uh, uh, scaling up of uh, scientific talks. Um, so, so yeah, so, so these are two announcements. So Umberto's talk, don't miss that, but also as part of don't miss uh, uh, all uh, nine talks, which would be great uh, next week. So thanks, Paolo. And Thank I believe there's two interesting questions. There. Yeah, there are two interesting questions. I wonder whether we can allow uh, the uh, people to ask the questions themselves. if. The, we can turn on turn on their microphones, or I can read the the questions. I don't know. I'll let them ask. Yeah. So one is Leonardo Novais Mesquita Damasceno, and the other one is Eduardo Rodinato. Long. 
Well, uh, look, uh, I, I just I read the question, but uh, uh, I could say something. Okay. Uh, okay. Leonardo uh, wants to know something about R minimal or R CMC. If there is any gap, uh, a churn like gap results. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, they, they are right. In fact, in the closed case, there are some results for high order mean quarter, that's right. And uh, I don't know, I don't believe, uh, I don't know if uh, is there this kind of results in the free mother case. Uh, it's a good uh, question, of course, especially, uh, so I'm um, very interested in the, the second one, the second mean quarter, second order mean quarter. I mean, it's the upper constant. It's the scalar, scalar curvature, so it's a very interesting question. I don't know, good question, Leonard. And uh, uh, about the, the question of Eduardo, uh, look, the... Can you see me? Um, Eduardo, the, the, can you see the, the, my, my blackboard? Yes. Great. N plus H. Um, good question. I use this. So I use this. Uh, Okay, can you, can you see more or less? The, this is the Minkowski identity I use. So this is exactly the, the term that I have in the, the proof, but on the boundary, since we have a free boundary uh, hypersurface, on, okay, in that case, uh, a free boundary surface in the Euclidean ball, this, this, uh, equals to one, okay? The position vector is exactly the cone of mall. Perfect. And so this is the, the length of the boundary. Great, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Marcos, there is an interesting observation by Felipe Suarez Guimarães saying that in Lin's work, he uses the flat normal bundle assumption to obtain a normal basis that diagonalizes the second fundamental form at every point. Let's see. In oh. the links work, he used thanks, the flat thanks, Felipe. Thanks, Felipe. Okay, that's, that's right. Exactly what I was asking. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Yeah. Thank so, you, Felipe. Uh, if this is the question, um, so what is the problem in producing an orthonormal basis that diagonalizes at every point? Maybe if you have multiple eigenvalues, like well, multiplicity, that could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I guess. Because if you have different eigenvalues, I think you can always find orthonormal basis that diagonalize the second fundamental form. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I guess, yes. Or maybe, or maybe no, maybe the same basis diagonalizes all the second fundamental forms at the same time. Maybe that's what he means. Is that what you mean, Felipe? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah, you have just one single orthonormal basis that diagonalizes all the second fundamental forms. That's the point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's right. And then and also there's a, another question. Yeah, there's another question. Can you read yes. it or you want me to read it for you? I'll read it. Yeah, just read it here. Well, uh, yeah. So in the last about your, your last year. Yeah. Um, in the Hi, Hi. Um, I was wondering, because from the proof, it looks like you could do something when the boundary is just strictly convex instead of being the round ball. Is, have you, have you, you are right. Uh, I guess, yeah, yes. You know, um, of course, uh, yes, you are right. In the case it's strictly convex, 
uh, maybe the constant changes, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, we have a lower bond in the in the the eigenvalues the, in the in the principle in the principal curvatures of the boundary. There's a lower bond for those, and then it appears in the computations. I'm I'm quite sure. I, I it's a good question. You know. Thank you. But uh, you are right. I guess it holds in this case with some of the um, probably the, the the infimum of the the infimum of the principal curvatures of the 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 boundary appears in the uh, as a in the upper bound of the second fundamental form. Good right. question. You might not be able to get the rigidity on the minimal case. But so you, you yeah. are you if asking you or are you playing? Yeah. Sorry, you you might not be able to get the rigidity when when sigma is minimal, but in the general case you could get that it, at least the topological disk, right? That's right. You are right. Exactly. Exactly. Because just in the end, we use the the, the rigid theorem of uh, phrase and chain. Thank you. Uh, can you comment very quickly on this very last result by Yao that you mentioned about the non-existence of uh, uh, Yeah, Yao, sure. Uh, Yao proved that uh, there is no, uh, uh, there is no minimal immersion uh, of a domain in Euclidean space, of, of the hyperbolic space in Rn, even local, even locally. Okay. For any n. So, for any n, exactly. Okay, if you assume that it's the the it's a minimal immersion, then there is no uh, immersion in Euclidean space. Very nice theorem. Wow. Yeah, it's true. But you can embed in Minkowski. Sure, sure, sure. That's curious. Very nice. Yes. Would anybody like uh, to ask uh, another question to our speaker? Don't be shy. <laughs> can I can I ask a trivial question? <laughs> sure. Let's see. I think it's a baby version of the question that Nicolau already asked. So, in, in the very simple case of, a, say, a surface, say so let's say yeah. a two with a well pinched curvature. Um, I guess then there are also perhaps this is trivial to see in this case. There are also gaps for the for the second fundamental form along closure desics, right? I mean, they are. Yeah, good question. In the very special case of closure desics, or not? Well pinched surface. What is a well pinched surface, Umberto? Sorry? What is a well pinched surface? Sorry. Like an S2, which is, say, almost like a round S2. Okay. That's not a trivial question. That's a good question. <laughs> That's right. It's probably trivial. Just I don't know. Yeah. Good question. Thank you, Umber. I don't know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thank you for the talk. It was very nice. No, no thank you, Umber. I'm sorry. Well, if there are no other questions, maybe we can thank the speaker again. It was a very nice talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rahik. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs>